This is Evangelist C.V. Williams coming to you again to talk about glorifying God. And I'd just like to talk to you again. I want to, uh, this is probably might be a little repetitious uh, about some of the things that I might say, but I just got to push this idea about the, the pain that I feel that God is going through because of what we're not doing as the church. And uh, th this scripture is used so often that if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and, and then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal the land. Uh, that scripture is quoted so much and in, and in so many ways that uh, I find out that everybody's using it. And I feel that if we're going to use a scripture, if we're going to quote a scripture, why not follow up on the scripture? Why not live the scripture? Why not practice what we preach? Why not practice what we teach? Uh, the things that I, I want to talk about is healing the land. And I believe in these last days and times that we've called on the the police department, we've called on the FBI, the mayors, we called on city councils, they have meetings, they have people going up into the schools and talking about what they can do in school, what can they do with the gangs. We see more and more prisons being built and even youth centers being built. Here in Cleveland, we have one of the biggest youth facilities to lock up our kids that I've ever known any city to have. And so we continue to lock up our kids. Where is that saying that we used to have said that the, the children are our future if we keep locking them up instead of trying to teach them the right way instead of trying to go to God to let God heal and deliver our youth as well as deliver us uh, I believe right now and I have spoken about it before about what uh, our church the Disciples of Christ evangelistic ministry had did in our community in um, Superior and in that area there. Uh, so i like you to know that we'll continue. We continue to try to do something in our community, but I think it's time that every church, every church would understand that they could do more in their community. So uh, right now, I just want to talk to you about some things, and I believe that... Uh, um, Everything that I'm going to tell you, you know is the truth. You know it is the word of God. And uh, one of the things is, is that we know that during the times, during the times that uh, God had to deal with Israel in many ways, he fought the battles for them. Uh, I remember there was times I read in Isaiah where he turned because of the idea of, of uh, Israel going to Egypt for help that God turned Egypt against Egypt and that the Egyptians were fighting themselves. We know that he had, that, uh, he had told David and, and Solomon and different leaders and Joshua that they were going to battles and that God would, uh, God would say, watch me, watch what I do, and that he would fight their battles. And what we're uh, standing up against nowadays is a spiritual warfare uh, coming up against our youth, coming up against our community, because it has been said, and we know that the word says that Satan himself is the spirit. You know, he's the spirit of the air, but he also has been quoted as being the God of this world. And that's because we are allowing everything to go on. Immorality and everywhere is growing. Uh, and, and then we think about the commandments of God, and we get taught Oh, we're not under the law, and we don't have to teach the law, and everything. Well, there's one little saying that, that Paul teaches in Romans, and I just want to read this real quick. Uh, in, the, in the book of Romans, Paul also, when he's teaching this, and most of you people love uh, Paul, you, you, you teach more Paul than you do anything else in the Bible sometimes. And, but you forget to teach all of Paul. In the third chapter of Romans, in the 31st voice, a verse, it says, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So stop teaching that we're not under the law. We're not under the consequences of law. That's what we're not under. But the law still stands and we need to uphold the law. And we as Christians, needs to. we don't need to go out with guns and knives. 
We're supposed to be able to have gotten this love of God so deep inside of us that we can love the hell out someone. In other words, I'm taking the expression of loving the hell out someone is if you don't have God, then you got the devil. If you got God, you got love. If you got the devil, you got hell. You got all this evil that's up inside of you. And you're not letting this evil come out. All you're doing is holding on to it because your desires of your flesh is so weak. And your mind is weak because the fact is, is that God said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Most of you are not even going to Bible class. You're not even trying to learn anything outside of what your preacher preached to you. So what we're talking about today is, is, is learning how to be the true children of God and being able to stand on God's word. And when he said that he has not given the spirit of fear, but of, of love and power, of power and love and a sound mind, power means that I have enough power inside of me to stand up against the devil because he's already been destroyed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So with, through the blood of Jesus Christ, I can stand against anything that's evil because I'm letting Jesus fight the word, the, 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 uh, with the word, excuse me. And, and, and I need to understand for myself that why is it that we're not doing this? Why is it that the church is afraid to come out into the community? Why are the leaders that's preaching these scriptures uh, in the Bible uh, not uh, coming out in their community and praying on their community, lifting up their community, asking God to anoint their community, putting out prayer, saturating your community with prayer. In other words, wherever prayer goes, God goes. So we should want to go out in the community and walk through. Uh, people would be glad to see Christians on the street. We see the draw of a witness, and sometimes we see the Muslim because they're not even out there as much as they used to be. But right now, it's up to the Christian. I would, I would love everybody here that, that hears me, everyone that sees me, to go back and look what happened in the Roman Empire. Throughout the whole Roman Empire, they were doing whatever they wanted to do until Christianity came in. And once Christianity came in, the Romans got all tied up in the mixed minds. They had all mixed thoughts. They weren't sure about what was going on anymore. They was confused because God brought that confusion in. God made them look at themselves. God made them look at those wicked emperors. He made them look at those, at those emperors. And then God opened the mind of Constantine. And Constantine made a big ruling. He came in and he changed. By him accepting God, he said, we're going to serve the God of the Christians. And by him making that big decision, changed the whole outlook of the world as we know it. So what I'm saying is, is that we need to go back and have a great study on what God did to change the world. What kind of works did the people of God do to change the world? What did they ask God to do? And what did God do? We try to take God out of everything. Take him out to schools. Take him out to uh, politics. We take him out. We taking him out to church in a lot of ways because the fact is that we are studying documents that uh, and 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 documentations and stuff that's written by man that's taking stuff away from the reality of the Bible. The Bible is the only true word of God, and I'm gonna put emphasis on the King James. Because of the fact is that we need to understand that God say that I will never leave you nor forsake you means that I'm always there with you. So those that are believers, you have to believe that God will provide for you, fight for you, stand for you, and anything that you do long as you're walking in Christ Jesus. This is where your power lies, in Christ Jesus. And so all I'm asking you, I am pleading with the leaders. I'm coming to you that God is hurting. You may not want to believe that, but if you look at everything that's going on and everything that people have talked about, uh, the weather and everything, they can't even predict the weather no more. They can't do anything. God is allowing certain things to happen to us that we've never even seen before. The people in the south is suffering with worse of snow than we are up north. All these things are just flipping on us. We don't know what we're doing anymore. All we're doing is saints is just going to church. And most of you only going to church on Sundays or maybe Saturdays. But most of you are going on Sunday, and you're not even going participating in your Bible study where you can learn anything. I'm not saying you pastors and apostles and evangelists are not teaching the word, but see, teaching the word and having your people follow up. Uh, God has made you shepherds. 
And I do have another scripture here that I know that you might get a little bit upset with me about. But I, I came here to give you scripture. And I came here to let you know uh, that it doesn't matter to me. I'm a messenger. And I'm a messenger of God. And I'm letting you know right now that this is what God gave to me when he re kind of uh, revealed to me about what's happening in the church today. And this comes out of Isaiah 56, verses 9 through 12. And it says, All ye beasts of the field, come to devour. Ye all ye beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. In other words... <laughs> How much church do we have nowadays? When we was a kid and stuff, we, the, the, the church would be open regularly. We, we lock the church down now because we got so many thieves. And the reason we got those thieves because a lot of you are not anointing your church or outside your church or outside the community in your church because the thief can't go anywhere where God has his presence. But if he doesn't have his presence there, then he can break in your church. He can do anything. So why is it that he can break into churches now and, and just go past God? Because there's no power truly in your church, but on Sundays. Because what you're doing on Sundays, you're praising the Lord, you're hollering, you're shouting, you're screaming, you got all this Holy Ghost, you're falling out on the floor, and you leave right up out of there and go commit some kind of immorality, something that you, that lust of the flesh is just, just piled up so much with the church members, with people that are in the church. You, 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 you. Uh, think about God maybe when you pray at night, but there should be prayer every day. There should be prayer when you go to work. There should be prayer for the streets. There should be prayer for the traffic. There should be prayer for your boss. There should be prayer for everything that goes on around you. If you're praying for it, you're asking for God's protection around you. And that's what the saints did. That's how the Roman Empire crashed because they were praying even in their death. They were praying about everything that was going on around them. And I'm just asking you to pray. Now, some leaders may get offended about what I just said here. But if you think about uh, how many of you here are walking around looking real good, dressed real. I know I dress real nice, but this show that I, this, that I got is coming out of my pocket. I pay my tithes into this show and everything. I pay my tithes and whatever I got to do for God, I give God everything I got because he's already given it to me. And if he give me enough life to come in here, I'm going to say what I got to say because right now in these last days and times, I'm hurting just like God is hurting because I'm seeing too much evil. And I know that there's a saying, and I may have it right, I may have it wrong, but I'm saying, in order for evil to flourish, good men do nothing. And what happens is, is that we got all the good people up in the church doing nothing. I'm trying to tell you, you don't really have any power if you can only feel it when the music's playing in the church. Or when there's a word going forth in the church. You feel like the word is powerful enough to do something to your life, then you need to take that word out there and give it to somebody in the street for their lives, somebody in your home. There's a lot of you that go to church and the people come up in your house is unsaved. So you're letting anybody come up there and say what they want to say, do what they want to do, and we just go along with just about anything because we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Well, that's not the way of a real true Christian. Because Paul hurt Paul and Peter and John and all the apostles and the disciples, they hurt a lot of feelings. John the Baptist hurt uh, 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 Agrippa so bad, I mean, he had him killed. Come on now. I mean, because of the fact is that we're supposed to tell the truth. Tell the truth to get it right. Tell the truth to keep it right. Because that's what we do as the children of God. And if we don't do these things, then the devil is going to have more and more, and he's going to build up and he's going to establish more and more power. Because the fact is that everybody else is gathering on and hooking on to what he's doing. Look at all the alcohol we consume now. Look at all the drugs we consume. There's so many different, they're finding meth labs everywhere. People got them in their apartments. They don't, have, they don't care where they got them at. And then everybody's out here and excuse the expression, screwing whoever they want to screw nowadays. We're doing the same thing that the Roman Empire did. Whatever you do, you're doing it just like Rome. And so this country, which was, and I don't care what anybody say, is the country of milk and honey. This is the land of milk and honey. This is America where you can do anything. I don't care about being an ex-slave. 
Because over here right now, I still can do, I'm still equal regardless of what they talk about color. I'm still equal enough to get what I contain as long as I attain it through the right way and with education, I can still get ahead. All I got to know how to do is pray and ask God to help me to do it. And God will move somebody out of my way so I can get ahead. Because prayer is like that. God gives us what he calls favor. And that favor means that I can move people, it don't matter about how high they are, how much money they got, it don't matter about color, it don't matter about, it don't matter about anything, it don't matter about guns or not, God will move things out your way for you if you decide to stand for him. You got to understand this, people, what I'm trying to tell you is, in these last days and times, it's time for all the churches to come together. All the churches of God, because when we get to heaven, it's not going to be color, it's not going to be race, it's not going to be creed, it's not going to be nationality. It's going to be one voice and one Christ, one Holy Ghost, one God. And we have to understand that that's the way we're going. That's the only way we're going to get there. Because it is time now for us to fight. It is time for us to fight in the spirit. It is time for us to walk through these communities, hold our hands up and praise God. And praise God because you said in your own words, you said it the day when you was in church, when praises go up, blessings come down. We want blessings of safety for our kids. We want blessings of safety for ourselves. We want blessings of prosperity in our community where we have jobs in our community where we won't have to take almost a plane to go get a job. Because the fact is that we can't build up anything if we don't even have the mind to build it up. Our brains has gotten fried from so many different things that we eat, drink. We didn't poison everything with all these artificial stuff and everything. So we can't. Everything is being set up. So if we don't understand what man is doing, God tells you in his word, man is destroying himself. This is what man is doing. Man is destroying himself. He is not trying to follow God. So therefore, he doesn't care about anything. We're supposed to love everybody. And like I said before, I, I don't care about what you are as a sinner. My job is to love the hell out of you. My job is to try to love you until I can convince you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the only way you're going to get through God is to Jesus Christ. That's the only way you're going to get to God is through Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ loved everybody. But just like God, he hates sin. So if he's giving you a directive, just like here in the Bible, he tells you what he don't like, what he does like. He'll tell you what he hates, what he don't hate. He'll tell you everything in the word of God. All you got to do is study it. I didn't say read it. I said study. When this Bible is picked up, you're supposed to pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, reveal your word to me in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says in everything you do in word and deed, do it all in the name of Jesus. When you apply Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, to the word, the word becomes life to you. And when that life that you get, that you're supposed to come out excited. Even when you're at home, you don't have to wait till you get at work. To get, I mean, at, at the church to get excited. You're supposed to get excited at work. You're supposed to get excited in your house. You're supposed to get excited in your car. You're supposed to get excited in the store. Wherever you go, you're supposed to be excited about this Jesus Christ who we serve. You're supposed to be excited enough to tell somebody. You're supposed to be excited enough to give somebody your testimony of where you came from and what you used to do. And everything that you've done in your life that wasn't right and God cleaned it up for you, you're going to have to tell somebody because they may be going through the same things that you went through. And these things, uh, Paul said, he said that it, in, in his writings that, that Jesus said in his word, they should know me by their testimony. Well, okay, then you have a testimony. You don't have to be a preacher to tell somebody about the Lord. All you got to do is say, you know, I used to be a crackhead. I used to be a pothead. I used to be into drugs. I used to be a drug dealer. I used to, uh, I'm going a little deeper. I used to be a killer. I went to jail and everything. I did my time and I asked the Lord to forgive me. I tried to even ask the people that I harmed to forgive me. But the thing, I can't ask the dead man to forgive me, but the Lord will forgive me. So, I mean, if God forgives everything and anybody, and if God can change any, everything and anybody, because God created everything and anybody. So, whatever it is, God can do it. So, and he's the only one God that can. You know, ain't no rat. You know, we have Buddhism, and we worshiping rats and snakes and stuff like this. I feel sorry for them people over in India and Pakistan and different, where they have these idol gods and everything, and they worshiping all these animals and these beasts and stuff like this. The cow is walking over dead bodies. They showed it on TV. And, and, and here they are uh, supposed to be worshiping this god named Buddha. 
instead of worshiping the one and truly God, Jehovah God, Yahweh, uh, our God, the Almighty God, Elohim, uh, the, the one and true God, Jesus Christ. Because of the fact is that we are allowing things to go on in our community, our communities are falling apart. Even when I look about this big place where I'm at now, and I used to think about how I was striving once before, and maybe one day it may rise from the, from the ashes again because all the churches that are in this, in this building here, and it may rise from the earth again and just put on some kind of a, 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 a new form of life that God may bring in here. This might end up being theaters where all Christian uh, 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 theatrics are being done. It might be a place where you can come in here and work in the studios and, and make music and create music. It might be a place, long as God is involved in it, God can do it. If you put God in it, God will bring it to life. I'm talking about we can build it, but we have to build it in the name of Jesus. But everything is like that if we want it like that. But we're not going to God and asking God for help. And God's hurting behind that. God said, this is my creation. And they don't understand if I created them, I can destroy anything that's harming them. I can take back anything that they have put out there in the negative world. I can take it back. I can take it and throw it in the sea of forgetfulness. Because they are my children and I want to bless them. They are my children. I want to save them. They are my children. I wish that every man would be saved. So how can the man be saved without hearing a word from God when the Christians are just going to church on Sunday and some, a few, on Wednesdays and maybe Thursday or Tuesday whenever you have Bible study? But it's not enough, people. It's not enough love that we're showing God. And we are not acknowledge him to give him the glory that he wants to give us. Also in Isaiah, it says, God said, I created them for my glory. You have to understand that we were created for God's glory. His glory is the whole earth. The earth should praise him. But the people's voice has the power for the earth to, to, to rise up. I mean, if the hands of a Christian is planting, planting seeds and God is behind the seed planting, then that, that whatever they're planting is going to grow. It's going to flourish. So if we're calling on the name of the Lord to make things happen, God says in his word in Malachi, he said, prove me. And that's not only about tithes and offerings, it's just proving, period. Because we're the one that should be trying to ask God, Lord, we can't do this on our own. We need your help. Father God, we need your help to heal the land. Because we believe. And, and I'll said it in, in, said it in, in uh, uh, and, and, and Chronicles, it also said in, in, in uh, 15, it says, my eyes are open and my ears are tend to the prayer that's made in this place. So if I just go outside and pray, like I want to pray on this building here because I want it to flourish. I want this, I, right now, we should be walking around in the studio here praying that this gets bigger. That more people will come in and get on the internet. We got people here that can create and do all kinds of things. I want them to be, I want them to flourish. I want them to prosper. So we get to pray for them. So what's happening here is that if God is in this, then all of us need to have prayer sometime right here. Just have prayer that God anoints it. Somebody said, well, I, I prayed this before. Unity of prayer says, when two or more gather my name, there I'll be in the midst of it. So when you come together and you just pray about everything that's happening and ask the Lord, say, Lord, touch this in the name of Jesus, that your voice will go out through this studio, loud and clear, throughout all the airways, throughout everything, any, anything that's visual, anything that the people can hear, Lord, that your name will be exploding throughout this, this, this KAZ radio. Lord, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus right now, and I pray as I'm speaking to bless this, uh, this, this studio, uh, uh, KAZ radio and abundant life. CCI.org. Uh, bless them right now. Bless all the people that's in it, Lord. Bless them not only with just prosperity, but bless them, Lord, with every equipment they need. Anything that they need, Lord, just give it to them, Lord. Bless their homes, Lord, that they will come in here with no sadness from the outside, that they'll come in here with a creative mind all the time. So, Lord, just bless them. So I, I want this to prosper. I'm asking right now, Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, that you bless the airways here that more people will see me and hear what I got to say. Because I don't I I I feel that what I have to say 
every preacher, every pastor, every minister, and I'm going to send this out to you too. All you preachers that's sitting down up, up on the on the on the on the on the, uh, uh, on the podiums with the podiums and sitting up and down up on the stages, sitting up down waiting for your uh, bishop or your pastor to call you to preach. Go find you an area out on the street and preach the word. Find you a place where you can just take the word out and, and see how God will bless you. And if a lot of people will come to the church just because you don't, that don't mean that you stop doing what you're doing and start your church. No, you continue to evangelize. Because see, when when the uh, uh, order and directions that Paul gave Timothy, he said, do the works of evangelists. So it, when we are ordained, uh, some of the pastors and the bishops that ordain us or the apostles that ordain us will give us that directive. But how many churches are actually doing it? How many churches actually have evangelistic ministry? I have people tell me, oh, we want you to come and, 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 and maybe go, go out with us and help us. If you want me to come, my phone number is 216-256-8711. That's 216-256-8711. I will come. I will give you tracks. I'll supply you tracks. You can put your own name on your tracks because I'll go with you in your neighborhood. You can put your name of your church, name, whatever information on those tracks. Those tracks won't cost you a dime because I'm not on this, in this ministry to try to make money. I'm in this ministry to try to win souls. I'm in this ministry to try to show people that I worship a true and one and only God. So I'm letting you know right now, this is it. I'm going to be on here as much as God allowed me to be on, but I'm going to let you know right now. And this may offend you. And this is my final words. Stop quoting the scriptures if you're not going to live them. Stop quoting the scriptures if you're not going to live them. Don't just quote something out of the Bible and you don't have no meaning to it. Because you just want to teach somebody something. Pastors and bishops and all you people, take your church by the hand and walk through your community and raise your hand and ask God to heal the land. I am pastor, I mean evangelist Chris Williams. I did my pastoring, but my time now is to take my people and evangelize. So I'm going back to evangelist C.V. Williams. I'm going to be on the air. I'm going to stay on the air until people call me and say, I want to go on the streets, pastor. I want to go on the street, evangelist. I want to go on the street because our ministry is <laughs> Warriors for Christ. Seed Planners International. So I, I love you and I thank God for you. So I'm just asking you right now, I'm a little bit excited and everything, and I'm not perfect to get on the TV and radio, but I just want to let you know right now, I love you all and I don't care who you are. I don't care what kind of sin you got into you. I want to love you until all the hell come out of you and that you are filled with love so you will know the true glory of God because it's all about glorifying the Father. Remember that. It's all about glorifying the Father. If Jesus is your Lord and Savior today, let him know that. Show him that you love him. If he's not, then call on the name of Jesus. And the words say, you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died and was raised on the third day, thou shalt be saved. The Father raised him up, gave him life. We only have the one true living God. And Jesus is that God. He is our love. He's our heart. He's our warrior. He is everything. Study your word. Study your word, people. Love the Lord. Read it. Know it. And apply the word to your life. Apply it. I'm asking you pastors, you bishops, you apostles, all you teachers, you evangelists, to apply the word. Don't just quote the scripture. Don't just try to have a Sunday service. Everybody need to be in Bible class on Wednesdays. Apply the word to your life. This is Evangelist C.B. Williams, and I'm signing out. Love, peace, and joy is all yours. But the power of God is yours to have and yours to take out. Show that power. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. Stir up the gift. 
and give God the glory.